Hello, and welcome to a visual demonstration of camera movements in- Hey, look, listen! Alright, so one of the main reasons I had to go back and reevaluate Skyward Sword was because I changed the way I was evaluating camera movements early in my audit of Twilight Princess. To better explain this, I've thrown together a visual example to show how I kept track of camera movements at first versus how I did things later on. Let's imagine Link is in a room with a large switch and a door. Link can't go through the door because it's barred, oh, oh. but if he hits the switch, yeah. the door will open for a short amount of time and Link has to get through before it closes. Classic Zelda. However, this is also a classic scenario where Zelda games hold the player's hand. It all has to do with the game's camera, which is usually under the player's control and focusing on Link's actions as he moves through the game world. This gives players a sense of agency and control over the events that are happening on screen. They are free to explore the world on their own and figure things out for themselves, until they come to one of those rooms with a barred door controlled by a switch. You see, the moment Link hits that switch to open the door, a couple of things happen. First of all, player control is suspended. We are unable to control anything happening on the screen and instead just passively watch as the camera moves to a predetermined location where the player can see the door unlocking. We also usually hear a special around this point as well. The camera will linger here for a moment or two before returning to focus on Link and restoring player control. This entire process, which usually only takes a few seconds, is what I refer to as a camera movement. More specifically, I consider this particular example to be one instance of a camera movement, because if completed properly, a player should only experience one suspension of gameplay in this room. With all this knowledge in mind, let me provide you with a demonstration of how this methodology played out during my audit of Skyward Sword. So, here's Link in Skyward Sword, pretty far along in his adventure. By this point, I've encountered 70 camera movements, and it looks like I'm about to encounter one more since this room has a switch and a door. So, I hit the switch, and, as expected, this triggers a camera movement. Now we're at 71 camera movements total and ready to move on, except... I didn't get to the door fast enough. The timer expired, and now the door is barred again. The only thing I can do at this point is go back to the switch and hit it again, which sets off another camera movement. The same one as before. This is the point where I figured I'm only seeing this camera movement again because I messed up. I shouldn't be giving Skyward Sword extra camera movements because I made a mistake. It just didn't seem right. So, for a place like this, I'd only count one camera movement, even if I messed up, and move on. That's the methodology I applied to my audit of Skyward Sword, and I saw no reason to change it in Majora's Mask. But when I audited Twilight Princess, something very unexpected happened in the Goron Mines. So, here's Link in the Goron Mines, and he's got a pretty hefty 100 camera movements so far. And what do you know, our old friends Switch and Door are here too. Here's what happened. I hit the switch, camera moves, add a tally, head for the door, and fall in lava. Oops, this time I really messed up. But thanks to video game logic, Link is back in action in no time. Now I've got to hit the switch again, which opens the door right away. No camera movement, no loss of control. I was pretty shocked, so I let the timer on the door expire, hit the switch again, and once again the camera stayed under my control while the door opened without issue. Deciding to test this one more time, I saved my game, switched the console off, fired it back up, came to the same switch, hit it, and... Wow. No camera movement at all. And the Goron Mines weren't the only place this happened. I encountered the same behavior at multiple points throughout my playthrough of Twilight Princess, where the game would take away my control the first time I hit a switch, but never after that. Basically, this was an example of Twilight Princess trying to hold my hand less than the games made before it, and my data had to reflect that distinction by counting every camera movement, even ones caused by my mistakes. So, in essence, this is the way I should have audited Skyward Sword. 
and Majora's Mask. The fact that I didn't means I excluded hundreds of camera movements from both of these games. Literally, hundreds. My first audit of Skyward Sword gathered 274 camera movements, but on my second playthrough, where I'm applying the new methodology, I've already uncovered an additional 240, and I'm not even halfway through the game yet. At this rate, I expect my second playthrough will net me at least 506 camera movements, if not more. Either way, it's bound to shake up the rankings, as right now, the tallies of camera movements for Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, and Wind Waker sit at 505, 263, and 539 respectively. I'm very confident in the numbers from these last three games, but Majora's Mask probably needs to be looked at a second time before it's up to snuff. It stands at 277 camera movements right now, but that number is suspect. It's also worth noting that all these numbers are only total values. We see a very different picture of this information the moment we look at hourly rates. Either way, we still have a pretty significant change in the numbers for Skyward Sword, and that's one of many reasons why I'm delaying my verdict in this audit. After all, no matter how important they may be, camera movements are still only one part of this audit. This audit isn't over just yet, but we're getting there. In the meantime, I'll continue with my playthrough of Skyward Sword. You can read the next article in the Hey Look Listen series, re-analyzing handholding in Skyward Sword, when it comes out sometime in mid-March on Zelda Informer at zeldainformer.com. Until then, thanks for watching and thanks for reading.